We thank you for these children in our midst. We thank you for your word as they're coming to us because of our fishing, because of your movement in our lives. We pray that as we hear your word now, you would bless us with understanding, with openness, with commitment, and with love.
standing as close as possible to France, with whom England has often been at war over the many centuries. Because of this strategic location, it is probably not surprising that at the top of the famous White Cliffs of Dover is a fortress. Excavations show that there has been a fortress on that spot for about 3,000 years. You can still walk around in the remains of a lighthouse that was built during Roman times, almost 2,000 years ago. The fortress above Dover has played an important role in the safety and security of England for a very, very <coughs> long time. Looking at it from the base of the White Cliffs of Dover, the walls of this fortress, it's now called Dover Castle, the walls are stunning. Hundreds of feet high in some places. It looks like it would be impossible for anyone ever to take the place by force. And that's the point, of course. Fortresses are not just about having a good place from which to shoot your enemy, but more importantly, they are places of protection. When your enemy does manage to land his ship on your shores, when your enemy begins to invade your town and starts to overwhelm you, when all else seems lost, you fall back to your fortress for protection. As those wicked French marauders come in yet again to evade, invade, and the unreliable Duke of Kent is once again slow to send his troops to repel the French, you come back to your fortress for safety. There, no one can get to you. In the fortress, you are secure. The author of Psalm 62 felt under attack. Did you hear all the words of assault that are in this psalm? Assail, batter, victim. Falling, tiring, bring down, falsehood, curse, extortion, robbery, all come directly from that psalm. With the vast gap of time and culture between this psalm and us, it's hard to imagine exactly what this person was going through, but the crisis of the assault is clear enough. It was bad. And it was personal. The prayer is not about an attack on a city. It's about an attack on a person. The psalm is a prayer from someone who feels that the world has turned against her. The invaded forces have landed on shore, so to speak, coming storming off their boats, but instead of, instead of wasting time pillaging everything in their path, they have come straight for her. A sail, batter, falling, tottering. And it's clear that the threat is not simply physical. These invaders don't just want to kill her. They want to bring her down. They want to see her suffer the loss of her integrity and her dignity and her good name. And to make it worse, it seems that no one else realizes what is going on as she is attacked. She says of her enemy, they take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths. They bless with their mouths. But inwardly they curse. In other words, they look good on the outside, these who are attacking this psalmist. If this were done right in a movie, the enemy would not look like a monster grunting or slithering or dressed like a Nazi. We immediately identify them as the bad guy. The enemy would be in a suit with a power tie and a fashionably unshaven face if a man or if a woman in a suit with heels and a blouse open just far enough 
so she can use her sexual power to her advantage. Maybe you remember the games adolescents play that being attacked by socially powerful people is bad, but there is nothing worse than being attacked by socially powerful people and having them be so successful at it that they turn all of your friends against you and you end up in the worst possible place. Not dead. some 